thermometer. In thermometer, we measure the temperature of any particular thing, and we can say that the temperature of the mercury present in this thermometer is also same with that body, right? And by that way, by seeing the value in the thermometer, we assume that the both temperatures are same. If I say I have two different bodies both in 50 degrees Celsius, so how I can say the both are in the 50 degree Celsius temperature? I will put thermometer in this. I will see the reading. I will put thermometers again this, and I will see the reading. So these two bodies are equilibrium. I how I can say that by set the equilibrium with the two bodies of the thermometer so the concept of thermometer comes from the zeroth law of thermodynamics then we have the first law of thermodynamics first law of thermodynamics also known as the law of conservation of energy as we have already discussed states that the energy can neither be created it cannot be destroyed it can be just changed from one form to another form so here delta is equals to Q plus W. This is the mathematical formation of this particular first law of energy. Delta is change in the energy, Q change in the internal energy plus W work done by the system. So that is your delta E is equals to Q plus W. Then we have the second law of thermodynamics. Second law of thermodynamics states that the entropy in an isolated system always increases. As I have told you, entropy of the whole universe is always increasing. So similarly, for any system as well, if any reaction is taking place, so definitely that particular reaction is a spontaneous reaction and it will increase the entropy. So the same thing is written here in the second law of thermodynamics states that the entropy in an isolated system always increases it is never coming down or never ever decreasing any isolated system is spontaneously evolves towards the thermal equilibrium the state of maximum entropy of that particular system that is also part of the second law of thermodynamics so there would be ultimately thermal equilibrium in which no heat takes place after the reaction or there would be equilibrium in the changing heat and this is the state of the maximum entropy of the system when it reaches to the equilibrium level. And third law of thermodynamics. The third law of thermodynamics states that the entropy of a system approaches a constant value as the temperature approaches to absolute zero. So when the entropy would be constant, there would be no increase in temper temperature as no increase in the any reaction in the your system so when the entropy is we would say is now constant it is not increasing anymore because we have seen that in the universe entropy is continuously increasing and increasing so there is a concept behind this and this according to concept the third law of thermodynamics is formed under which we can state that the entropy of the system is going to be constant when there would be temperature of the absolute zero Absolute zero means zero degree Kelvin, or you can say minus 273.5 degrees Celsius. So when the temperature reaches to this point, minus 273.5 degrees Celsius, so on that point, the entropy will not going to increase any further. There would be constant temperature entropy then. So that is third law of thermodynamics. Although achieving this temperature is impossible. Till now, we haven't achieved this amount of temperature. In the universe also, a few bodies are found recently, which is having minus 272 degrees Celsius, 71 degrees Celsius temperature, but not minus 273.5 degrees Celsius. Similarly, we cannot reach the speed of light the same way we cannot reach to this amount of temperature as well in the universe. Theoretically, practically as well, this is impossible, almost impossible. Maybe in the future, uh, we can achieve that for now, but this is impossible. So this is all laws of thermodynamics. And this is all the things about the thermodynamics which we have completed now. So I hope the things are clear and easy to understand for you. And here we are ending this thermodynamics chapter. So one miscellaneous topics we have covered now. The next miscellaneous topics that I have to cover 
data we have to cover. So let me share the PPT first. That is the remote sensing. So another important topic. So if you look at the past year's questions from this remote sensing topic, so there are vast variety of questions, vast variety of questions. And if you look at the topic remote sensing, if I say someone have to study the remote sensing completely, so that would be almost equal to the full syllabus of the environmental science paper too. So you can imagine how large or how big is this remote sensing. This can be huge. And there would be only one question in each semester, maximum one you can find out, or majority of the time. Uh, very rarely you can find out two questions in one semester from the remote sensing. So for one and two questions, studying that much amount of the thing is a not visible decision, I would say. You can use this particular time for any other purpose. So I hope this is clear to you. So what we will do here in this particular thing, we would try to cover the things which are uh, just very, very important and very basic of the remote sensing. So at least from this section, if you are getting any question, you can easily solve that. So that's what we are going to try in this particular remote sensing chapter. So again, welcome you in the classes of EVS Academy. The next topic that we are covering in this particular miscellaneous topic section is the remote sensing. So what is the remote sensing? If you look at the literal word of the remote sensing, remote sensing means just controlling anything which is well far apart from you. And if you have control of that thing, so what we would say, we would say that you are controlling that thing with the help of remote sensing. You are getting information, you are getting in control with any other object. So that is all part of the remote sensing. So if you look at the literal meaning of remote sensing, now what is the actual meaning of remote sensing? What nowadays we are using the term remote sensing for, so that is used for a small or large scale acquisition of information of an object or phenomenon. So small or large scale acquisition means acquisition of the images, acquisition of the clouds, because clouds can be sensed with the help of radars. And you can just see how much amount or intensity cloud formation is and what would be the prediction for the precipitation or rainfall. So that is what, that is small or large scale acquisition of the information, maybe cloud, maybe images, maybe whatever you are just detecting or maybe any phenomenon you are detecting by the use of either recording or real time sensing devices. So real time sensing devices, real time image you can see or recording devices, you can see the past old images as well of the objects and that are wirelessly connect so well far apart as i have told you or not in physical or intimate contact with the object so for example such as aircraft the drones spacecraft satellites there are no pilots for these all the all are automatically wirelessly controlled by the human beings and we are not in contact or touch with that particular things and we are getting information from them easily so that is what remote sensing is. So I hope remote sensing is clear to you. The main things that we have to cover the uh, in this particular chapter, as we have seen in the energy chapter as well, a similar kind of content I have created here as well. We have to cover remote sensing that we have covered this particular line and types of the remote sensing. What is the resolution term in the remote sensing? Then how electromagnetic radiation is used in the remote sensing? And then what are the main Indian satellites which, uh, from which sometimes questions are asked in the examination. So that is the only portion that we are going to cover in this remote sensing chapter. So let's move further to the types of remote sensing. The types of remote sensing you can see here, the remote sensing is divided in two main types. One is called as active remote sensing. Another one is called as passive remote sensing. Now, active remote sensing, where we use the active radars, you can say, or active type of instruments, you can say. Now, what is the meaning of active type of instrument? 
these active type of instruments have their own source of energy and they can generate their own type of electromagnetic radiation and that electromagnetic radiation will go down to the land surface and in the land surface that will interact with the objects multiple objects and then after interacting with the objects it will come back again similarly suppose you are in a very high mountain range and if you start screaming there of any person's name so there would be echo voice echo you can find out there so through that voice echo the sound will come back to you by interacting with the hills or mountains so similarly in the active remote sensing that electromagnetic radiation will react with the objects which are present downside in the earth surface and then the reflected back energy or the reflected back electromagnetic radiation is just sensed here here you can see so here the radar impulse is there and it is interacting with this house trees mountains and reflected imp impulse will come to this aircraft again and that is sensed so here your own source of energy generation should be present there then only you can use such type of active remote sensing so here own source of energy or in this aircraft is present and that is used the sensor creates its own energy which is then detected and measured as it is reflected back from the objects for example here you can see radar what is the radar light detection and ranging radar radio detection and ranging sonar similarly we have sound uh, sound waves detection and ranging you can say that is the sonar so all these are type of active remote sensing so i hope active remote sensing is clear to you and few are these examples of the active remote sensing that you can find out in the real world similarly we have the passive remote sensing passive remote sensing here you can see in the passive remote sensing they do not have their own source of electromagnetic radiation because they do not have the own source of energy so similarly this way these are using the reflected back radiation of the sunlight so this is interacting with the house and then sorry the reflected energy goes to the satellite and the satellite sensors will detect this reflected energy of the sunlight so this is called as passive remote sensing in which we are using the passive energy source not the own energy source to detect the energy portion some thermal heat energy would be also going outside from this atmosphere from the south to the atmosphere to the space that is also detected by few satellites so these satellites which are using the sun's energy as the electromagnetic radiation source energy to detect the reflected radiation from the objects those all are type of passive remote sensing the examples of passive remote sensing here you can see is landsat landsat is a satellite so we have a landsat series of satellite starting from landsat 1 to till date we have the landsat 9 so uh, if you look at the images the very popular landsat images are landsat 8 images landsat 7 images and recently by the 2022 year we have the landsat 9 images as well these images are completely free to use anyone can download these images for the study purpose for the research purpose and these can be used by any person all over the world so that is what we have in the landsat satellite similarly we have another satellite landsat is owned by the earth explorer usgs united states geological survey of the usa they have developed this satellite series and providing the data to the all over world similarly we have the sentinel sentinel is the satellite of the european space agency so esa you can see this esa have the sentinel satellite we have two sentinel satellites sentinel 1 and sentinel 2 the popular both satellites provide continuous images of the earth surface so that is again a kind of passive remote sensing which is used this reflected energy from the sun that is coming out and that is sensed by these satellites and the images are provided by them 
so i hope active remote sensing passive remote sensing both are clear to you